My name is Nancy Merrill, and I am president of the Colorado Crane Conservation Coalition. The Greater Sandhill Crane here in the Yampa Valley was an endangered bird back in the 1970s. But community passion for this species and devotion to conservation has helped these spectacular birds make a wonderful comeback here in Northwest Colorado. Not only is the Yampa Valley a stopping point for spring and fall migration, but it also supports a breeding population of greater sandhill cranes numbering about a thousand. These birds come here every year to nest and raise their young. In 2012, a proposal was put forth to allow a limited hunt of these sandhill cranes. In response to this proposal, bird watchers, nature lovers, and concerned citizens from all walks of life came together and founded the Colorado Crane Conservation Coalition, or CCCC, an organization devoted to the protection and conservation of greater sandhill cranes and their habitat in Colorado. I am standing here today near the headquarters of the Colorado Crane Conservation Coalition and next to their mailbox, which is lovingly decorated with a beautiful sandhill crane by local artist and craniac Donna Steele. Donna, like so many other artists in the Yampa Valley, has been influenced by the cranes to create art that reflects the magnificence of this species. Donna will take us today on a tour of crane art in the Yampa Valley inspired by the greater Sandhill Cranes. Hi, I'm Donna Steele with the Colorado Crane Conservation Coalition. The Yampa Valley has a love affair with Sandhill Cranes. It's evident when you see the many crane inspired artwork throughout the valley. We're going to take you on a virtual tour of this artwork and this is where it all began. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Steve Cobb. I live in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I'm a local uh, artisan and woodworker. And I crafted, designed and crafted this cuddle bench. I was inspired by the uh, mating habits of the cranes that they mate for life. And in doing so, I decided to make a bench that would inspire us as humans to cuddle more often. Uh, I designed it, I assembled it, I did the, the artwork on the sides. It's an applique of a crane in tall grass. Uh, the, the painted logo here of a crane in flight. I, um, I really feel that what, by sitting on this as, a, as a humans that it may inspire us cuddling. And, and um, I marketed this at a festival, a crane festival in Steamboat. And, and it was open to artists to enter pieces of uh, their handiwork. And it sold at the festival. And I believe that uh, it was a nice project and the, and, uh, the new owners uh, have taken good care of it. And, and thank you. Hi, my name is Julie Arrington. I'm the park manager at Steamboat Lake and Pearl Lake State Parks. And we're here today at Steamboat Lake State Park. We're a busy state park and we have a lot of great recreational opportunities both in the summer and the winter. Um, we have a very busy campground and a lot of people like to come and enjoy the park for the day. But we also have some great natural resources that we try to protect and also um, help people learn about when they come visit us. Part of what we have here is a beautiful mural done by local artist Julia Dordoni. Um, and it represents a lot of um, the wildlife and plants that you're going to see when you come to the park. Especially featured here are the sandhill cranes. We're known for our sandhill cranes because um, they will migrate here in um, early April and nest here and 
People like to come up and see them and enjoy them um, in their individual pairs. If they're lucky, you might see one of the little babies called a colt running around with the adults out in the wetlands. So they're really um, fun and exciting to see. This mural was um, made possible through a grant through the Colorado Parks Foundation and some fundraising done by Steamboat Lake, um, the Friends of Steamboat Lake State Park. So um, we're glad that we have this. It was also um, constructed by one of our volunteers at the park, Mitch Otaki. So um, it was a combination of efforts to make this um, wonderful educational opportunity available. Hi, everybody. My name is Abby Jensen, and this is Ichabod Crane. He is the Yampa Valley Crane Festival mascot. Um, and we have him so people can get up close and see how big these birds are that live here in the Yampa Valley. I'm very proud to say that the photograph is mine. And with the help of Johnny Walker right here in Steamout Springs, we were able to create this beautiful little display. And you may notice that there are some feet. I'm gonna have my friend Kelly come in and demonstrate the use of the feet. So they're there so you can position yourself and see what your wingspan is compared to our great Sand Hill, greater Sandhill Cranes. Thank you, Kelly. So every year, Ichabod uh, stages in the Yampa Valley like the rest of our cranes do, specifically for our crane festival. But what he doesn't do is go down to New Mexico for the winter. He comes back up here to Steamboat Lake State Park, which is where I'm at right now. And this is where Ichabod lives in this beautiful visitor center here. And because it's nice and toasty warm in the winter, he can survive here in the, in the visitor center uh, year round. So I hope you will come and see Ichabod. He's always ready to pose. These amazing crane gates are by artist Ray Selby. The artist writes, the birds were built at my blacksmith shop in Tucson, 1996. I designed and built the two inserts down there. Then the construction here includes a 32 foot piece of railroad rail under the drive with all the pipe frames welded to the rail. The posts are steam pipe and the arch pieces are secondary stationary turbine blades from the Hayden Power Station scrapyard out of unit two salvage. Once in place, and I had the inside measurement, I built the gates here at this shop. The wheels were from a horse-drawn grain seeder from the Zabel Ranch next door. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on the Yampa River Core Trail in downtown Steamboat Springs, overlooking the mighty Yampa's Wild mural that was created in the summer of 2019 uh, in partnership with the Friends of the Yampa, Steamboat Creates, the City of Steamboat Springs, and our artist, Jill Bergman, as well as uh, other about, about 150 other volunteers helped paint that mural. It took us about, oh, I'd say six months to eight months to, to create that mural. We actually painted it on a fabric that was then lifted up and glued to the wall. The, the Yampa's Wild Mural is, is really a testament to the entire Yampa River. It's 250 mile long course put up on an 850 linear square foot uh, mural. And the idea is to showcase the Yampa in all of its elements from its headwaters and the flat tops all the way down to the confluence at Echo Park at Steamboat Rock in the Green River in Dinosaur National Monument. Uh, the Sandhill Crane, as we know, utilizes the Yampa River as a home ground. We have uh, a great, uh, a great, great area for the Sandhill Crane to come into, and it's because of the Yampa River uh, as one of the, the main lifebloods of our community. I'm Betsy Blakesley. I'm here at the Nature Conservancy's Carpenter Ranch, right on the Yampa River, and it's May. And there are cranes nesting all along the wetlands here on the Yampa River. And I'm here with two cranes. This is Day of the Dead Crane. And Day of the Dead Crane was created by the Steamboat Springs High School students. 
And this is Crane's Eye View. And Crane's Eye View was created by Gail Fetcher, who lives uh, on a ranch in North Route County. And um, where lately they've been expanding their range. And so they're seeing more and more cranes up on the Elk River. And I, I love the idea of bringing cranes down to land and showing what they see, which is wetlands and lakes and uh, willows and places where they can nest successfully. Hi, I'm Donna Steele. I'm here with Bob Crane. Bob is one of the yard art cranes that local artists produce as a fundraiser for the Crane Festival. We will once again this year be having 25 yard art cranes up for silent auction. They will be on our website at coloradocranes.org. So be looking for them uh, Labor Day weekend. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julia Dordoni and I'm a local artist here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. I was honored to be asked to paint a mural here at Freshie's Restaurant and it's about 35 feet long. And when I got to this corner here, I wasn't quite sure what I should do. And the owners just love sandhill cranes. I didn't even know what sandhill cranes were, but I researched it and saw how beautiful and magical they are. So I decided I wanted to paint a whole family of sandhill cranes here. And ever since I did this mural, I've been so inspired to paint sandhill cranes that I now included them in the next mural that I had just recently finished also. So I am glad to be part of the crane crowd now. This beautiful sculpture entitled Crane by artist Jack Stevens is my personal favorite not only due to some of the details, such as the rebar legs, the fact that his wings move and his cute little tongue, but also he is placed in his natural habitat along the Yampa River. He is also part of Art in Public Places, which is managed by Steamboat Creates. Hi, my name is Jorge Torella, and I am a stained glass artist here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. You are now in my studio where I make my windows. A few years ago, I was commissioned by Nancy and John Merrill to do a window of sandhill cranes for their house. Here is a piece of beautiful stained glass art that was commissioned for a room edition. The artist is Jorge Torella, and it was commissioned by a craniac who obviously loves cranes. And Jorge was asked to incorporate and feature the Sandhill Cranes, but also to feature some of the geographical features that are found on the property, including the Yampa River and Bears Ears Mountain. Hi folks, it's Steve Cobb again. I'm back here with my title, Karate Crane. Now, this is another outdoor setting. Uh, there's a swallow's nest right above me on the right. And the swallow uses the head of the crane as a perch. And also has a tendency to poop on the sculpture's foot, but hey, it's wildlife. What inspired me to do this particular piece of work was that I usually work in wood as a medium. However, I found this rusty metal and I got inspired to do a, a, a life-size moving uh, element that, that I just thought was a really nice way of presenting a crane. Uh, he actually moves like a crane, especially if the wind's blowing. He has a tendency to fluff up his wings and that, that is a... Uh, emotion that cranes in real life use. Uh, it, I would say it's almost uh, full size based on sizes of cranes that I've seen in the wild. So uh, we call him the Karate Crane. And I'm very proud of him. And he's another outdoor fixture. They'll 
last longer than I will. He's made of rusty tin. So that's it. Thank you. Our tour of the Yampa Valley Art so far has focused on the Sand Hill Crane. But today we're going to expose you to another large bird that makes its home here in the Yampa Valley, the great blue heron. This is Herman the Heron. He was created by sculptor Malin Pearson, who is a Utah-based metal sculptor. Malin often makes his pieces from found objects, as you can see here on Herman. We've got gears and bolts for the eyes. We've got some uh, chain link here for the neck. His knees are made out of a spring. And it's just, it's always fun to look at Malin's uh, sculptures. And we want to take this opportunity to tell you a few differences between the Sandhill Crane and the Great Blue Heron. And we're going to have our mascot, Sandy, who in herself is a work of art, explain these differences to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandy. I am a Sandhill Crane, and this is a Great Blue Heron. Now, we are both pretty similar. We have gray feathers, we have a long beak, long neck, we favor wetland areas, and we have long wingspans and stand about four to five feet tall. But there's a few differences between us. Let me tell you about them. So when cranes fly, they have wingspans about seven feet, and they fly with their wings out in snappy movements and often raise their wings above their body. Great blue herons though, they fly with slower movements and often have their wings below their body. Now, when cranes fly, we like to stick our necks straight out like this. But great blue herons, when they fly, they have their neck in an S shape like this. Key difference there. Now, we, when, we, when we fly, we both great blue herons and sandhill cranes stick our feet straight out like this. There are differences in our feet. Sandhill cranes have three toes in the front and a short hind toe. And this actually prevents us from roosting in trees. Great blue herons, however, have a longer hind toe where they can roost in trees. So you might find a heron in a, in a tree, but me, a sandhill crane, you're not gonna find roosting in a tree. So sandhill cranes, you will find on the ground or flying. 